years ago, in the realm of Apollyon, past the Garden of Four Rivers and in the region of Abaddon, there stood an old city. Its name in the ancient tongue was Nordkus, but time and speech and a brilliant mind named Lux soon set upon the more pleasant name of Not Cursed. Though some would have thought it wishful thinking, for the city was indeed cursed with perpetual decay, leaving the inhabitants no choice but to labor perpetually for the very sake of their existence. Years, decades, and centuries passed, and the city grew in number and labor. Ruling over it were the supervisors, descendants of Lux. Brilliant organizers, they kept the city in existence by the oversight of endless shifts and schedules. Obstinate headache. Next. Christian Pilgrim. Next. <sighs> Work was paramount, which is why such a commotion resulted one day when it was discovered that... A man has gone missing! What? Stand back now. What's more, I'm... down and burn it. All of it. Uh, hurry up now. Supervisor Six will be here any minute. And I'd be very careful if I were you. You want to avoid any contamination. So, that's him. Right you are. Faithful Pathfinder. Yee! What a madman! <sighs> well, you can't really blame a man for dreaming, can you, obstinate? Even if he is a madman. Was a madman. Only a madman would be foolish enough to venture beyond the borders. Nothing good ever comes from veering from the rules, I always say. Nothing at all. Beyond the borders? Is that where he went? Yes. And everyone knows there's nothing but death beyond the borders. Isn't that right? Uh, what is your name? Christian Supervisor. I mean, Christian, you're the Supervisor, obviously. And you don't want to catch the same thing Faithful Pathfinder did, do you? Whatever it is that drove him to this deviation. No, no, surely not. Of course not. Never. No. Good. Do not fail to collect every last scrap of paper. Every sketch. Any notes. And you? Yes, my superior? I have a task for you. Uh, right away, my superior. <laughs>
What was Faithful Pathfinder thinking, I wonder? It has been said that no one just finds the book. But rather, the book finds them. And so it happened that Christian began to read. And read. And read. And read. Unable to pry himself from its pages, he read the book all through the night and all the next day, and the day after that. And the more he read, the more his concern for right things grew until they became, as it were, a great burden to him. Christian read about things he had never imagined, about kindnesses he had never known existed, about wrongful things that needed to be put right, about the origins of his city, and about a coming War? We have to get out, Christiana. It says so in this, and I believe it in here. And the war will destroy the entire city. So we must flee and get to the... Celestial City, the City of Light. The City of... It's a book, Christian. If you'd only read it, you would understand. It all makes... Ah! Sense? You're asking me and the children to follow you beyond the borders. <gasps> no, Christian. It doesn't make sense. None at all. Ever since you started reading that book a few days ago, you have gone on and on and on like some lunatic. The city is going to be destroyed. The city is going up in flames. It's hard for me and for the children to see you in this sorry state all bent over and... It's this weight. Weight? What weight, Christian? You've gone to nothing but skin and bones. The more I read, the more it weighs on me. Don't you see? Oh, Christian. I know. This all seems crazy. I do. But I love you, and... and I only want what is best for us all. If the city is destroyed... Oh. If the city is destroyed, I don't want you, the children, or anyone else, for that matter, to perish with it. I love you, Christiana. <sighs> Then choose. What? Choose, Christian. The children. I. We can't take seeing you like this, day in and day out. You're going to have to choose what you want to do. Stay here with us, or leave. Because we're not going with you. We're not. 